in the same vachana of allama prabhu that our narsimurthi ji quoted the last stanza says soham yambuda keli dasoham havu mar diddole ati galeva guheshwara ati galeva guheshwara that is the last question it says you chant soham soham or you do sadhana spiritual sadhana and you don't do dasoha seva will you be able to cross over at all will you be able to reach that divine at all that is the question he asks just now he mentioned percentage of uh, seva and sadhana in one's life sadhana means very deep spiritual effort tapana the burning desire for moksha mumukshatra and for that sake whatever is required viveka vairagya shat sampat mumukshatva all that is sadhana part of it and you have to work towards developing that understanding of your true nature and everything that it takes whether you read scriptures go to pilgrimages do contemplation yoga meditation re- listen to sadguru or go and uh, you know do some contemplation all by yourself everything is a part of that sadhana sadhana is more an individual internal effort to know the truth but what is seva seva is an external activity where you also look after the welfare of people around you all beings be it trees be it uh, the nature environment be it animals birds human beings and everybody else so these two the internal process and the external process must go on all the time so soham is required but dasoham is also is required serving servitude is also required without one and only having the other you cannot cross over so when you ask for give me moksha there is a condition that he himself said preconditions are there terms and conditions apply everywhere in the world so also in the path of spirituality in other places they print the terms and conditions so small that nobody reads it but i say it loud and clear these are the terms and conditions follow this and you will get what you have asked for terms and conditions the seva and sadhana both have to go on in one's life one without the other you cannot achieve this but there is a proportion to how much seva and how much sadhana one should do some people say till the last breath i want to do seva seva all the time i want to do this i should attain moksha why because i have been doing seva all through the life if you do only seva your ability to develop compassion kindness and not have too much of selfishness have more selflessness will all increase but have you in experienced that atmanubhava that may or may not happen you might have experienced compassion like god's compassion you might have experienced some bit of kindness and generosity and sacrifice but has it led to the ultimate experience of divine truth that may remain without outside your experience also that is possible lot of people think like that by doing all the good rest is swami's responsibility i have only served in his organization all through of throughout my life now it is his job to take me across and the same swami says that you no know, do some sadhana also a couple of hours a day you must spend on your own self study and swadhyaya and meditation contemplation that they are not willing to do because they love doing seva so in a way they, they are workaholics in a way they have to do some work now they are doing seva work but they are not doing for atma sakshatkar they are doing for their own happiness because they like doing it everybody praises them everybody likes them for what they do and they keep on telling themselves anyway i am doing this now rest is swami's responsibility he will take care but i am only telling you to do sadhana also but why are you not doing sadhana that is also a part of your spiritual evolution both are to be done together do soham and dasoham both have to go on but what is the proportion he said as per your age of course you can always do more than more sadhana also or more seva also based on your this thing but a time will come in life where you have to take it very seriously that you have to do some sadhana which is contemplation and meditation and continuous remembrance of that truth so that it becomes a part of you this adi shankaracharya he hits the nail on the head when he says in viveka chudamani padantu shastraani yajantu devanam kurvantu karmaani bhajantu devataah atma ekhye bodhena vinapi mukti na sidhyati brahma shatantare pi which is which means padantu shastraani read all kinds of scriptures speak about it good 
Yajantu Devanam, all kinds of gods you propitiate by doing yajna yagas, good. Kurvantu Karmani, all kinds of actions you undertake, selfless actions, pure actions, service actions undertake, good. Bhajantu Devata, go to all temples, pilgrimages and please all the gods, all good. But at the end, if you have not experienced the oneness with yourself, Atmaikya Bodhya, without that this mukti, what he's asking for, is not going to come even in hundred years of Brahma. So in one year of Brahma, hundred yugas happen. Hundred Mahayugas. In each Mahayuga, there are four yugas. You can go and calculate. We are just in Kali Yuga. In hundred of such Brahma's births also, you are not going to attain moksha, is what Adi Shankaracharya says. Why? Because you have done everything, but you have not gone inside and known the truth. By nature, senses are outgoing. They love to go outside. They want to see things, experience things, taste, smell, touch, experience all the world. It is the nature of senses. That's what he only was quoting in the morning. Paran chikani vratnatsvayambhu tasmat paran pashyati nantaratmi. The senses have been created by the creator in such a way that they are always outward going. To turn them inward is an effort. Like against gravity, if you want to do something, it's an effort. Leave it, it will anyway fall. No efforts. You cannot go and tell, I help this ball fall on the earth. No, it fell. It will anyway fall because of gravity. But I helped throw something up. Yes, you did because you have worked against gravity. Likewise, the nature of Indriyas is to go towards pleasures which kind of engage with senses. Seeing, eating, tasting, smelling, touching, all these panchendriyas are super active. They love doing that. To turn them inwards is the whole effort. And because it is an effort, we avoid that. It's like that difficult question or difficult chapter that we keep it for the last day of the ex before the exam. We keep avoiding it. No, no, we last we will keep it. Easy ones we keep reading over and over again and expect to get a distinction. How is it possible? By nature, mind does not want to go towards God. Within, it always wants to go outside. Therefore, to turn it inward, you need to do sadhana. Which means some silent sitting, some contemplation on the scriptural truths, some bit of, you know, swadhyaya studies, and more an internal process. It need not be external. It has an internal process. But other than that, mind wants to do everything else. Ask, them, ask the mind to keep quiet and sit quietly. It won't do that. It will do everything else. So that is what I was telling. As you age, your proportion of your time and energy spent on your sadhana must increase with your age. You can do seva, but limited. Because seva is again engaging the mind in the external things only. Whereas sadhana is disengaging the mind from external things and turning your mind inwards. It's two opposite things. So it cannot work together. So I told, if you are 65 years old, spend 65% of your time for doing sadhana and the remaining 35% you do whatever seva you can do for the day. Because naturally body also is not capable of doing that kind of seva because it gets older. Mind also becomes weaker, feeble. So sometimes you may do wrong things you may, without your realizing. So it's good to give it mind and body only so much work that it can undertake. Rest of the time, spend on your own self, you know, sadhana and develop that internalization of your mind. That is very important because at the end, mind is the reason why you will get moksha, you won't get moksha. It is the key to moksha. Mana eva manushya anam karanam bandha moksha yoho, it is said. It is the reason why you would get moksha, you won't get moksha. If it is free of all the entanglements and desires, you will get moksha. If even one small desire remains, Kama abhir jayate, tatra tatra, it says Upanishad. Whatever be the little desire left in the end, that is the reason why you will be born again. And I was telling all these people the story of that man who gives name of gods to all his four sons, Narayana, Krishna, Govinda, Madhava, like that. So that in his last moments he will chant their names and he will get moksha. That was his logic. So when he is in the final moments and dying, he ch shouts Narayana, Govinda, Krishna, Madhava, like that. All the four sons come running. Yeah, what happened, father? What happened, father? He says, oh, all four are here. Who is looking after the shop then? And he dies. Internalization is why it's important. Towards the end also, he's thinking of what? Not Narayana, Govinda, Krishna, Madhava. What he's thinking of? His shop. Somebody is not looking after the shop. What will happen? So internalization of mind is very, very important. But just you want to internalize all the time and don't want to do an external seva, that also is not doable. That's not everybody's path. The golden path is this, a balanced of 
a balanced life of sadhana and seva. That is the golden path. And as age changes, your proportion also keeps changing. Otherwise, at the end, it's very difficult to sit quietly. Most of the elderly people, they worked so hard all their lives that if they sit quietly, they think they're wasting their time. They have to do something. Whether it is necessary or not, you dig a pit and fill it back, but you do something. That is the kind of nature they develop and very difficult to dissuade them from doing anything. But they think they are doing God great seva. But it's not necessary. You have done what you had to do during your active life. Now it's time to withdraw. So this art of withdrawal is sadhana. Art of engaging is seva. How to engage with the world selflessly, karma yoga. But art of withdrawal is jnana yoga. To be able to withdraw and be with yourself. And that is very difficult. The easier one is to do seva. The difficult one is to do sadhana. So you have to remind yourself that with time you have to change these proportions. Manushyatvam, Mumukshatvam, Mahapurusha Samshayaha, all that has come to you. Then you let the whole life in a pure and a noble way, serving others, all the seva you have done. You are ready now. The, the wood is dry. It has to just catch fire like that. Now you do some sadhana and that will create that fire in you. And then you have the Atma Sakshatkara. So it's very easy for you. You have already lived a very good life. Very, very little obstacles for you. But still, if you don't put efforts for sadhana, then it will be very unfortunate that you miss it at the last moment. Having got everything right, finally one thing you got wrong, everything goes wrong. Shouldn't happen like that. Even one desire should not be left in inside your head. So withdrawn you should be in your self. And that is what Upanishadic declaration is. Yada sarve pramuchyante kama yasya ridishritaha atamatyo amruto bhavati atras brahma samashnute. When all desires are finished, there is nothing left in your heart. You are absolutely desireless. Then you attain Brahman. Then you attain that self-realization. But Krishna says, Sarvadharman parityajya mame ekam sharnam vaja aham tam sarvapape bhyo mokshishya avimashucha. Krishna says, don't worry about anything, just come to me and I will give you moksha. I said, no, no, you are only explaining the second line, the first line, go back to the first line. TND. What is that? Sarvadharman parityajya maam ekam sharanam raja. Give up all other dependencies in life. What are your dharmas? Dharmas are dependencies only. What are the dependencies? I am a teacher, this is my dharma, I must go and teach. I am a whatever, a doctor, this is my dharma, I must go and treat. All dharmas are there. Leave all those dharma means there is no sense of any more identification with your own individuality. That's what is dharman parityajya. It doesn't mean give up Hinduism, Christianity and become atheist. That is not sarvadharman parityajya. Give up all the sense of dependencies and this identification with your individuality. Amatyara jivi, that's an identification again. I am better than those boga jivis outside. It's an identification again. Give up all sorts of this duality and identification with anything. That is Sarva Dharman Parityajya. And this idea that I have got to do something without me, the world won't operate. Don't be under the delusion. That is how one should give up all the dharma and then come to me, Ekam Sharanamaja. Means one and only soul thought in your head is me, nothing else. Me means the Atman. Bhagavan, whenever he says, nowhere in Bhagavad Gita he says, Krishna, I am Krishna, I am Krishna, like that. He always says, Aham, aham, when he says aham, it is about the Paramatma, it is about the Brahma Tattva. Nirguna Nirakara Tattva, that Krishna always refers himself to as aham. That is why throughout Bhagavad Gita, nowhere you see Sri Krishna Uvacha. Everywhere, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. Bhagavan, the one with effulgence of that truth, he is speaking. So when Krishna speaks in Bhagavad Gita, he speaks from that highest point of Parabrahman. So when he says, Mamekam Sharnam Braja, whose Sharna we should go? People of Krishna's, you know, whatever that devotee, devotees, they only say, go to Krishna, go to Krishna, that's what it means. But I argue with them, where is it written that Krishna is referring to himself as the Krishna and the body? Everywhere it is, Vyasa writes Bhagavan Uvacha, Bhagavan Uvacha. Because Krishna is speaking as Paramatma, Parabrahma. So whenever he says, come to me and I will rescue you, he is referring to the ultimate Nirguna Nirakara aspect of himself, not the Saguna Sakara Krishna. So he's saying, give up all kinds of identification and dependencies in the world. It means all the desires and expectations and all the reactions, actions, everything give up. Think of me and me alone, single pointed focus on me. Who me? The Parabrahma Tattva. Then Moksha is assured. That Parabrahma Tattva will ensure that you attain Moksha. 
all moha is gone and you are able to easily merge in the divine self that is what he is saying so it's not about reading the second line and feeling very fulfilled and happy krishna is said he lashur moksha that's not the way it's going to happen you have to also fulfill the preconditions the laid down terms and conditions sarva dharma an pratyajya so what am i telling them when i tell them withdraw even from seva slowly because seva is also a dharma that you have to pratyajya at some point in time but then why did you ask me to do seva in the first place when you wanted me to give it up in the end it's like asking me why did you ask me to get into the bus when you wanted me to get out of the bus at the other end are <laughs> how will you travel otherwise you have to get it travel but get out at the end don't keep sitting in the bus that's all i'm trying to tell seva is the bus you got inside that it took you on this path it will drop you at some point of time here onwards you have to walk alone and merge so this is the idea of seva it's only a vehicle it's only a tool to purify yourself make your mind less desireless more stable more pure so that you are ready to withdraw it quickly and merge it in the higher atman that is the whole idea of seva nothing seva does not have any benefits beyond that for oneself others may benefit but at the end you will not so many people take this idea oh i am doing seva now it's swami's responsibility to take care of everything swami only is telling yes do did seva very happy now do sadhana but they want to skip that part they only want to remember the first part like moksha ishyami ma shucha don't worry i'll bring you i'll give you moksha but he won't he has a condition before that which is to give up all signs of identification duality dependencies desires it should be empty inside you and i was telling them how does it feel when you are in that state of atmanubhava what is the experience of that atmanubhava i was talking to them about and very beautifully vasishta ramayana is vasishta says he says samshantam samshanta sarva sankalpa all the ideas sankalpa vikalpa means thinking or deciding and judging and analyzing everything is over absolutely zero thoughts in your mind ya shila antarivasthiti that which is like the inside of a stone imagine the inside of the stone outside there is storm rain sun everything inside of the stone absolute still absolutely silent absolutely dense peace is there so when a mind is free of all thoughts what is its state its state is like that of the inside of a stone absolutely peaceful but you will say i experienced that peace in mathematics class often till that chalk lands in a projectile motion right on my forehead due to the several years of practice of my teacher i also experienced so our vasishta is very clear he says second line read the second line jadya nidra vinirmukta it should be free from laziness and inertia and sleep because you are deep asleep therefore you are experiencing shila antarivastiti that is no atmanubhava that is jadya anubhava that is nidra anubhava that is not so what is it jadya nidra vinirmukta it is free from both laziness inertia and sleep सा स्वस्वूप स्मृति स्थिति स्मृता इट सेस दैट इज द नेचर ऑफ द सेल्फ वेन यू आर एक्सपीरियंसिंग योर सेल्फ एज द डिवाइन वॉट आर यू एक्सपीरियंसिंग एप्सल्यूट थॉटलेसनेस एप्सल्यूट डेंस पीस अनडिस्टर्ब पीस एंड इट इज नॉट लेजीनेस इट इज नॉट स्लीप यू आर वेरी मच अवे कैन वेरी मच अलाइव ऑल्सो येट यू आर एक्सपीरियंसिंग दैट डीप सेंस ऑफ पीस then you will ask can i function if i am in that deep sense of peace yes you will you will function but not with the identification that you are functioning for a gyani things happen a gyani does things i am doing that feeling is there for a gyani for the gyani things are happening through me that is the feeling is there for gyani but remember just doing seva seva is only one part i always say there are two friends one is lame and another is blind So they both want to go to the market so what do they do lame cannot walk but blind cannot see so they partner with each other the blind says oh lame fellow sit on my shoulders and tell me how to go where to go and i will walk and we will reach the destination seva and sadhana are like that two friends seva 
without sadhana is blind. It doesn't know what it is doing. It can even bring ego. I am great sevaka. Whereas sadhana without any seva is lame. You can keep doing sadhana but you will not move. So initially to reach a destination we need seva. Like the bus. But ultimately we have to give up that also. Withdraw into the self and be established in that. Then whatever divine inspires. If you must do some seva you will do. If you do not do seva there is nothing to feel guilty or bad about it. But you should be true to yourself. Let, you, let your thoughts be inspired by the divine. This is the essence of spirituality and I was also telling them when you experience Atma Sakshatkara, no musical instruments or orchestra will start playing or no lights and sound show will happen and no sudden energies and few auras will start emanating from you. Nothing will happen like that. This is all, uh, you know, too much of dramatization of uh, Atma Sakshatkara. None of this will happen. Don't fool yourself with all these concepts. This I am telling with my own experience. But you will experience some deep sense of peace. Uh, feeling almost as if you are floating. Even though your body is there, you don't feel the burden of it. You don't feel the burden of any of your thoughts, emotions. Nothing. You feel light. You feel to, as if you are you're floating. You are not connected to any of it. It's all there around you. But somehow you don't fix yourself in any of these things. You somehow remain uh, distanced from all that. That feeling you will get. And you will never feel a sense of doership or a sense of enjoyership. Everything is happening. That kind of feeling comes. And once you are established all the time in it, it's easy to go once in a while into that state and again you have to come back because Jiva Pragna is there, Daiva Pragna, Jiva Pragna. It goes on playing like a seesaw or like a tug of war. You know, it goes on like that, depending on how much you, en how much you engage. That's why I told them, see, when you engage in the world, mind has to act in the external way, Jiva Pragna gets activated. But when you withdraw and want to enjoy that self, Daiva Pragna gets activated. Now you, all the time if you are in Jiva Pragna, you will forget how to activate the Daiva Pragna at the end. So you have to go on doing this all the time. That's why proportional efforts should be put. So this is the essence. I am sure some of you have, would have understood, some might not have understood. But remember this, that Seva and Sadhana both have to go on. But as your age progresses, the proportion of time and energy that you spend on them should also change. Whole life you can't just keep doing seva, seva, seva and at the end go and argue with God that I did so much of seva, why you did not give me moksha? He will tell for the seva I have given you peace of mind, I have given you a lot of happiness, I have given you a lot of self-satisfaction and a lot of praise and a lot of accolades from everybody around you. That is enough a reward for your seva. Moksha is not the reward for seva. Moksha is the reward for sadhana. But sadhana cannot happen unless you have done some seva reduce your desires, learn to withdraw, become less selfish and all those other things have to happen which Seva does for you. Final sadhana is for internalization of this truth. The more you think about these things on a regular basis, mind will become capable of internalizing this truth and becoming inward going. That happens. Continuously being in Daiva Pragna is something or Atma Pragna is something that we have to practice. It's very important. Unless we do that Atmaikya Vodena Vinapi Na Siddhyati Brahma Shatantare In 100 years of Brahma also we will not attain the ultimate. Not to scare you but to tell you what it is. And to tell you that this is the path we must follow. And if you do everything right, Moksha is a natural outcome of it, right? If you have studied well as per the directions of the teacher, naturally you are going to get the good marks. Likewise, just do the right thing all your life. No other place can be better than this place to do all these things. Everywhere else you may get distracted, but this place keeps you focused. Try to remain focused and put your efforts. And as per your age, age-appropriate behavior as they say. Age-appropriate sadhana, age-appropriate seva you should do. If youngsters tell me I want to sit and internalize everything and I'm not going to come for seva, I'm not going to agree with them. If that Brahma Jnani you are, then I don't need you here. You are already attained, you don't need a guru, you don't need anybody. You go anywhere and do what you want. Otherwise, engage in seva during the day or whatever the time you say. Then the rest of the time you withdraw. And you check your schedules and everything. More or less your schedules, everything is like this. More or less. To help you with that. Students. I'm talking about students. Similarly, staff, devotees, everybody should follow this discipline. And that will really help you to gain the ultimate, ultimate experience of Atman. And that thereby there is no coming back again and again.
punarapi mapi jarnam punarapi marnam all that will stop of course if god wants to send you here as his emissary as his messenger as his servant for his, his work that's god's choice but you are not born here out of compulsion of your karmas or uh, leftover desires or unfulfilled ideas all that will be done that kind of possibility is there in this place that's why i call it is a moksha dham it is it is the place from where one can get moksha and that is why please pay, pay serious attention to all these things and follow all these things on a daily basis if unless you learn to withdraw gradually one find that you just can't drop things it's not going to happen <laughs>